Yo, this pack is pretty strong, brother. Pass that to pack. Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Boone coming at you all with headliner breaking news. I'm pretty much Keemstar today, man. We hopped into the newsroom because um, you guys saw the title, man. Supreme Spain has officially been shut down, but not just that. These boys are now on the run. They are doing the take hey through Europe because the creator is now facing up to eight years and like ten million dollars in fines. This is a crazy story. We're gonna break it all down for you guys today. So drop a like if you want more of these kind of news stories about just clothing and streetwear in general. Now that the Supreme season is over, these are sort of the videos I want to begin focusing on. So just drop a like if you guys enjoyed this one. I'll certainly make more of them and feel free to leave in the comments your opinion of this news. Let's get into this story. I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, man. I'm so excited to actually crack into this case because this has been going on for so many years at this point. I believe Supreme Spain like officially opened around 2018 or so. It's kind of a unique story. I've never really seen this happen in fashion before and that's partially why there's been such a long battle between the two companies. But a court in England just decided this ruling this month. So let's start from the beginning. Who exactly was Supreme Spain? Well his name is Michel D. Piero. I, I definitely said that wrong. And he was the initial person that founded the company International Brand Firm. Literally just sounds like a rep company name but um, he founded this company seven years ago. So as I said Supreme Spain's been around for a little bit and I should probably stop saying just Supreme Spain because this company IBF actually registered trademarks for both Supreme Spain as well as Supreme Italy. In case you did not know that both of these fake Supreme rep companies are actually the same person and it was all part of an elaborate scheme to pretty much steal Supreme's entire branding make a quick profit off of it. Now I'm sure you're wondering how this dude was able to just steal one of the biggest US brand names and make millions off of it over the course of several years. Well my man found a good old-fashioned legal loophole. <laughs> Everybody's favorite. Um, so there's actually like a rule in several different international companies when it comes to trademark law and that rule is the first person to actually apply for trademark gets the registration of that trademark. Now I believe that differs from the US where it's actually based off the first person to like utilize the brand name, use the logo, etc. I saw Chrome Hearts actually bring up this defense against minimal if you guys saw my video about that like a year ago. But I guess in some of these international countries, it's whoever applies first for the trademark. So using this loophole, my boy Michelle finessed his way into several different countries, registering the Supreme Trademark in Italy, Spain, San Marino, Tunisia. He also attempted to do it in several other countries, such as Indonesia, Singapore, China. My man was the next pitbull. <laughs> he was trying to be Mr. Worldwide. And for a little bit, it was actually working because Supreme had not applied for a registration of trademark in any of these countries. So Supreme obviously was not like, oh yeah, Supreme Spay, like, this my boy. Like, no, they were not happy about it. They took it to court, and I believe, like, the first initial court hearing, I could be wrong about this, I believe it was decided in Supreme Spain's favor because, obviously, the company was able to exist for several more years. And I actually remember at the time when Supreme lost the initial case and everyone was kind of ripping on Supreme for it, I was kind of one of those people. It was pretty funny, you know? I just found it very entertaining to see this random scam mogul, like, finesse the shit out of this huge corporation and kind of get away with it. And the justification IBF was trying to make to the court was that their brand Supreme Spain and Supreme Italia were legal fakes, which is a completely made up bullshit term, but I like it. It's like Supreme Spain came in for a presentation in front of their class and just winged it, came up with some random filler word, and it was sort of working, man. Like, they were obviously making millions off of this horrific company, and I believe Supreme actually appealed the decision. That appeal is what eventually led to this case being reopened, and obviously it did not go IBF's way the second time around. As I said, legal fakes is not a thing. They're trying to say like, oh, well, we registered the trademark first and so therefore technically we are a legal company, but yes, we do make fakes of another company. Obviously, I wasn't in the courtroom, so I can't give like an exact definition of their defense, but it was pretty much that. The court was like, Nah, so uh, they had a jury actually indict these boys. They went after not just Michelle De Piero, but also his kid, Marcelo, because I guess they're in this shit together. And all I gotta say is 
You know what? Michelle's kind of a cool dad. Like, imagine your dad came up to you one day, he's like, Hey son, you wanna make a fake supreme empire? Like, I, sure dad, that sounds fucking sick. Maybe this was just a father trying to bond with his son, show interest in things his son liked. Maybe he saw Marcelo watching your favorite live cop lesbian, going for some supreme stuff, and he had the idea, let's make a $10 million fake supreme Yo! empire. I think that's a fair assessment. But, um, both of these dudes were actually not in the courtroom. They were, like I said, doing the take -a around Europe. Hey, but I ain't beat that Case, bitch, I went to jail. So now these two boys got uh, 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 warrants. So they're fucked. Um, not just warrants. They're getting charged damages of 7.5 million pounds. Somehow, that's still less than what your mother weighs. That's 10.4 million dollars. Or in other words, two supreme accessories. That is an insane amount to pay. And apparently, my boy Marcelo was not doing too nice like we all thought. He had 400k in his bank. So man's is definitely fucked. Look. The way that my bank account is set up. They already had cops come to all the warehouses, probably break all their shit. They repossessed all the fake counterfeit clothing. It's been called one of the most important multi-jurisdiction civil enforcement operations in recent years. I like to call it the end of an era because, man, Supreme Spain was a pretty funny thing to exist out there. You guys have probably also seen the fake Supreme China stores. I believe that's also connected to this whole Supreme Spain thing. But, man, the end of an era. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for my guys. Marcelo, we're smoking your pack. James Jebbia somehow stays winning, this bald motherfucker. This is so huge for Supreme because they really have been trying their best to like go as international as possible. Supreme Spain was a huge like cum stain in the way of doing that. So now the case is closed and that's gonna do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, man, just drop a like on the video if you would like to see similar topics to this. I'd love to make more videos similar to this of just stories throughout streetwear and stuff, man. It's a lot of fun for me to make and it's obviously the Supreme off season. So your boys gotta do something. So yeah, I'll see y'all later. Better boy, boop. Passing this Supreme Spain pack on to my subscribers. I love you guys. I'll see y'all in the next one. I'm out. Peace.